Hey everyone, Coach Taya here. I'm going to give you a brief overview of the main numbers, the main features that show up on your screen in Training Peaks. So this is going to be for the basic edition of Training Peaks as well as the premium. And uh, I'll point out what's available to each one of those. But it is a, uh, a brief overview if you're new to this or if you have no idea what the numbers mean. So this is a very basic video. I'm not gonna get into a lot of details of all the charts and what they mean, okay? All right, so we're looking at a completed workout here. So um, you have your calendar, so let's say you pick a workout and you completed a workout, you uploaded it, and now that's what you see. You see green, that means your completion time was very, very, very close to the estimated time or the planned time for the workout. If it was way above or way below, it will show up as red, or if it was close but not quite, it would show up as yellow, oh, excuse me, yes, yellow. So you can change those colors, you can change to not have them, or you can have them because, you know, a lot of people like to see green everywhere, um, et cetera. So with that, you look at then the up here, so we're looking at an indoor workout. This was intervals planned, and so that's why you see these blue bars over here, those are the intervals, et cetera. Then you have the description of the workout, in this case, I always enter what the workout is for, why we're doing it, what we're working on, um, how long the intervals are, just so the athlete can take and have an idea of what they're gonna be looking for to do in the workout, if there's gonna be changes in cadence, et cetera, so they know ahead of time, even though that's also gonna pop up in the screen as they do the workout. And I also include here a link to a video explaining that workout, okay. So then you have um, on the left column here, planned, because it was indoors, the only planned numbers are duration and TSS and IF. I'll get into those numbers in a minute. So completed was an hour, that's why you see green. Miles, um, total distance is right here. Average speed, pretty straightforward. Um, calories, calories is an estimated number it's really, you know, not perfect. No gadget out there is able to accurately track calories you spend. Even if you enter all your information, your weight, your height, et cetera, there's no way that a machine will know exactly what happens inside your body and how you process and metabolize food. Therefore, it is an estimate. Then um, elevation gain for this workout, and now TSS. TSS stands for training stress score. And so training stress score is a term created by Training Peaks because it is a formula created by Training Peaks. And essentially it uses all kinds of different physiological metrics to quantify the training stress of a particular workout or a piece of a workout. So it's really a tool to be used as you plan your week, as you plan your months and your, your training load, right? Um, you see, if you, if you want to look at your calendar and figure out which is the hardest workout of the week, look for the one with the highest planned TSS. That is, in theory, your hardest workout of the week. Now that is limited. Why is it limited? Because for VO2 workouts, this metric doesn't quite work. Why doesn't it work? Because TSS takes into account FTP and intensity based on FTP, which is power. TS, uh, VO2 is something completely separate from FTP. Somebody's VO2 capacity has nothing to do with their FTP. And therefore, the TSS number might say, as is the example here in this VO2 workout, it says only 66 TSS, which is you know, medium to low stress score for a workout, when in reality, it's VO2. And there could be efforts in here, they are all out. And so for this rider, after the rider finishes the workout, the rider is feeling super exhausted. And reason being, it was a hard workout. It's just that TSS doesn't quite reflect that because of its formula limitations. So, so by definition, you know, one hour spent at FTP equals 100 points in terms of TSS. So if this was super, super hard and you did an hour at FTP, your TSS would be 100. Um, the, the 
trainee stress score is a composite number, and so it will take into account duration and intensity uh, caused by the training set and the stress that the training session would cause. Okay, then the number down below is IF. IF is a number better looked at by itself per workout. So while TSS is something you can look and plan accordingly for the week. So let's say you start, if you're a new rider, you might have 200 TSS total for the week when you add all your TSSs for the workouts. If you are very fit and you've been training for a long time, maybe your TSS will be 500 for the week. Meaning if you add the TSS for all the workouts, you get to 500. IF doesn't work that way. IF is for that particular workout. IF is intensity factor. So for any workout or part of a workout, IF is the ratio of the normalized power, I'll get into what normalized power is again, uh, <laughs> to the rider's FTP. So it gives you a relative intensity for that particular workout. Again, if you were to spend a one hour workout at 100% of FTP, your IF for that workout would be 1.0. Now for this one, as you can see, the planned was 0 0.8, completed 0 0.7. That is telling me that the intensity factor for this particular workout was around or the equivalent of spending an hour at 80% of FTP. All right, so um, the next number is normalized power, which is a fancier concept than average power. Average power, you just take your power spent for the duration, right? The normalized power, again, is something that Training Peaks Estimate. It's a formula estimating the power that you could have maintained for the same physiological cost. What does that mean? If, let's say in this case, this, this workout had a normalized power of 143 uh, watts. So what normalized power is telling me that the, the physiological cost of this rider spending 143 um, watts excuse me, of this rider doing this workout would be the equivalent of spending 143 watts for an hour. So it's, it's if the power were held perfectly constant, then the, the output would have been 143 watts. Now, we know it wasn't constant because there were intervals, right, up and down, way above 143 watts. Look at this one for 238 watts. Um, but they were short. And, but if you were to flatten everything out, so let's say you pick up all of these intervals, put them together, flatten them out as if they were held constant, it would have been the equivalent of 143 watts. Again, normalized power. These metrics are interesting, but they are not something that tell the whole story. Just because, again, each person is different. The stress that you might feel from a workout might be different. The workout itself, might have features that cannot be reflected in these numbers. For example, if you are required to do, and this is a silly example, but just to, to give you the picture here, if you're required to do 15 minutes at 30% of FTP standing, that would be super tiring, right? I mean, you would finish that ride, your legs would be shattered. Nevertheless, the numbers over here, normalized power, IF, TSS will show a super, super easy ride, like a recovery ride, and that's not what happened to you. So that is just an extreme example to give you an idea of how these metrics are nice, but they're not everything. So they're tools, use them wisely. Okay, so that's what all of those numbers mean. And by the way, you can go to help.trainingpeaks.com and look for um, the these definitions, um, all these terms are defined in, on their website. So if you want to go into more detail into these formulas, you can visit their website and take a look at those. Okay. Then um, down here you have minimum, average, and maximum for heart rate and power. Pretty straightforward. Equipment is good to select your equipment, which one you use for each of the workouts and rides, because over time you know how many miles you have put on your equipment. And uh, if you keep good track of these things, you know when to change your chain, you know, or when to replace your cassette or when to take your bike in for a tune-up. It's a good way to do it. All right, then comments, you can enter those in here. Analyze, once you click analyze, 
you see all of your uh, power profile for this workout. In this case, you can select here. So these are the menus available. The, the buttons will uh, be your options for what you want to show on the screen. So right here, I selected the workout profile, which is the blue boxes that you see showing the target power. I also selected the pink, which is watts, which is power, showing what the power was compared to the target. So see, I can see if the rider was tracing it pretty well, if it was below target or above target, like over here, et cetera. I can select RPMs, that's your cadence, and see how the cadence was varying over throughout the workout. And you can compare to the prescribed cadence um, and see if you are on point. Feet uh, or elevation, only applicable if you do this right outside or if you do free course in Zwift, for example, outside of workout mode is what I mean. Then uh, BPMs is your heart rate. You can select that, show heart rate. That's the red line, seeing um, what your heart rate was for each of these intervals. Then miles per hour, if you're interested in that, you can show that as well. That will be another line added to your graph here. But I would say overall, as a general rule, you look at power and cadence for these workouts. And then if you are outside, it's good to have the elevation as well because you see how you did your efforts, right? How did you climb that mountain? Were you at constant cadence? Were you changing your cadence? What was your power, et cetera? Then on the right side here, entire workout is a summary very similar to the one you saw on the first page when I started the video. And it shows again your work in kilojoules um, meaning energy spent, which is similar to calories, not quite. IF, intensity factor. Uh, variability index, that's another term that you can do a little search on Training Peaks and find out because this is a basic video. I'm not going to get into that. But um, then we have, so you don't need to know that for now. Um, <laughs> watts per kilogram. This is uh, simply a ratio of if you look at your weight divided by excuse me, if you look at the watts you spent divided by, or you produced, divided by your weight in kilograms, you get watts per kilogram. So for the full workout was 1.66. Now, if you have a premium edition, you can select any part of this workout. So I'm going to select a, uh, an interval here. I go and drag my mouse and select a little interval. That interval then is going to show on the right side. See, it's calculating it. And it's going to show me that interval was a minute, 26 seconds. The normalized power was 211 watts. The IF, intensity factor, was 1.11. That means that minute and a half was the equivalent of doing 110% of FTP. That was the interval. And then you have watts per kilogram. Again, that power, 211 watts, divided by the rider's weight in kilogram will give you the watts per kilogram. So if you don't have premium though, you're not able to select uh, any part of the workout to see the details. You can only see the overall. And then here laps, again, if you, if you have premium, I believe that's the only uh, way that you can see your laps. So if you select any of these laps, it will the same way give you a summary of what that lap was um, up here. So those are really the main things to look at um, there are other graphs and charts. Uh, there's a charts library here that you can go to and select all of these other uh, options that you might want to look at if you want to look at them. I would say that the interesting ones is heart rate by zones. These zones are already um, standardized in training peaks. You can override them, but if you don't, by entering your maximum heart rate, Training Peaks will calculate uh, six zones for them. So, of course, the more time you spend, you know, the bigger, you, the more time you have, the bigger um, time spent on these higher zones, that means the workout was harder. Then you have the map, again, the laps, all the details about your laps, if you're into looking at those. And then power by zones, same idea. If you enter your FTP in Training Peaks, it will automatically calculate six zones for you. Those are standard, and once again, you can override them because you might work with somebody who or has different power zones. 
And that way you know zones one through six here, the standard ones, and you see how much time you spend in each one of them. So indeed, this was an easy workout because most of the time was spent in zone one, which for this rider means between zero and 125 watts, okay? So yeah, that's in a nutshell, um, looking at your training peaks. I hope this is helpful. If you, oh, files, yeah, if you, if you do this workout outside and you want to upload them in Training Peaks, you can go in files and then upload, browse files and upload whatever activity um, to match up with that. So that's, that's in a nutshell. If you have any questions, if you want um, me to go into any more details, please post them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks, see you next time.